Okay, hi YouTube. Um, I just wanted to do a vlog this week since I haven't in a little bit of a while and uh, have the house to myself, so I thought, why not? Um, okay, uh, for this video, I wanted to do a, a sort of a DVD update. Um, now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I am not the type of person who usually does DVD updates. I, I like to stick with reviews. Um, but I thought this one could be kind of interesting. For this video, I'm going to be showing off my uh, Criterion collection. Now, if you're a movie geek or uh, a, a film buff or whatever, you, you probably know what the Criterion collection is. They are a DVD distribu distribution company who releases um, several, uh, both foreign and American, titles um, and they kind of uh, give you a little bit more with their DVDs than you usually get. Uh, very heavy loaded on the special features and uh, a certain emphasis sort of on film history as well. So that kind of gives you an idea of what it is. If you're a movie collector and there's a title you like and you know that Criterion has a version of it, that's usually the version you're going to want to buy. Um, I'll just kind of go through with what I, the ones that I have and why I bought them. If you want to do a response to this video, you're you're welcome if you have a Criterion Collection and you want to uh, kind of show it off. Uh, this was kind of going on last year with Film Fanatic 57 before his departure. Um, and I always wanted to do a response to it, but, but uh, I never did, so now I am. This is Rashomon by Akira Kurosawa. And uh, I actually found this one um, pretty cheap. Now, usually Criterions are very expensive. They're a uh, so anywhere between twenty to fifty dollars, usually closer to the fifty dollar range, and this one was really cheap because I was able to find it used at my local record store. And um, if you don't know who Kira Kurosawa is, he's a Japanese director from roughly the forties through the sixties. He continued to make films all the way up through the eighties, but uh, most of his uh, seminal work kind of took took place in the 50s and 60s, and uh, this is a really cool movie. Um, actually, this is one of the movies that uh, sort of inspired, I guess, sort of the format of Social Network. So if you're into that, uh, I would say watch this and, and you might be able to see the parallels or similarities. Um, this is another Kurosawa movie. I have a few by him, and this is the one that I think most people are most familiar with. I mean, if there's a title that you... Uh, always kind of think of when you're thinking of Kurosawa, it's usually Seven Samurai. Um, uh, very cool movie, very kind of classic samurai movie. Um, it's sort of done in a western style. Uh, I believe The Magnificent Seven was an American remake of Seven Samurai, so if you dug that, definitely check out Seven Samurai. Very long. Um, I'll show these two at once, just to speed things along. More Kurosawa. And this is his movies Yojimbo and Sanjuro. Sanjuro is kind of a sequel or semi-sequel to Yojimbo. Yojimbo is about a lone samurai that was later remade by Sergio Leone as the Fistful of Dollars. Um, and this is sort of the sequel to Yojimbo. Um, completely different story, kind of even a different time period, but uh, they both sort of have the same lone samurai character, the Yojimbo character. Very cool samurai movies if you're into that. Uh, sort of along the same lines as Seven Samurai, just not quite as epic and not as emotionally driven. This is the last Kurosawa movie I'll show, and this is called The Bad Sleep Well. Stylistically, this is very, very different from his samurai movies, or even uh, Rashomon, which is also uh, an Edo period piece. This takes place. Uh, in the time that was made in the 60s, and it's sort of uh, Kurosawa's version of a noir based upon the story of Ham Hamlet, so it's uh, very interesting to say the least, and I really do quite like it a lot. It really shows off his technical chops. Okay, uh, another director that uh, Criterion loves is uh, Ingmar Bergman, who is a Swedish director from the uh, 50s and 60s, and he made a lot of really dark, um, interesting, moody, atmospheric 
pieces that deal with uh, subjects of religion and death, mostly. Um, I guess, kind of a sort of proto-gothy kind of director. Um, and this is one of his movies uh, called The Magician. And it's very cool. It's about a, uh, a, a magician who's kind of a charlatan, and he uh, has this you know, sort of gypsy troupe that travels along with him. They go from town to town, and, and they land in one town where uh, there's some diehard skeptics who want to sort of pick him apart, literally. And this is another movie, this probably is the most well-known, called The Seventh Seal. Um, probably seen a lot of parodies of this. It's about uh, Europe during the time of the plague, and it's sort of all an allegory of death. And Death himself appears in the movie and plays chess with uh, this man here, who is a, a knight serving in the Crusades. Um, also really interesting. Now, up until Fantastic Mr. Fox, Wes Anderson seemed to have a deal with Criterion that almost anything and everything he released was going to be released through them. And so he's always kind of had the Criterion treatment. Usually you can get a lesser version of the DVD as well, but I would definitely recommend the Criterion versions of his stuff. And I have all of his movies. I'll just show them all off at once. Bottle Rocket, probably one of his lesser known ones, but I think actually one of his better movies, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. Of course, Rushmore. This is annoying. That tear was there when I bought it. Very expensive, too. Um, this is the first movie, maybe one of the first Criterions I ever bought, too, because I, I bought this just purely on the fact that I liked the movie. I wasn't even thinking of Criterion. But it has original art as well um, from Wes Anderson's brother, who does all of the art for his movies. And Life Aquatic, which I always forget is a Criterion, um, mostly because it's not one of my favorite movies by him, but, uh, you know, has that original art as well, and I believe the regular DVD version does not have this, and it has an extra disc. So, cool stuff. Uh, always like Wes Anderson. Really wish that they'd re-release, or, or had released, Fantastic Mr. Fox, um, because you know it would have been really cool had they done it. It's still, the, the Blu-ray's fine, but... Now here's a movie that uh, is pretty, I would say, lesser known, um, but actually one of the cooler Criterions I own, I think. And this is the documentary Crumb, about Robert Crumb, a controversial cartoonist from the 60s who did a lot of uh, political cartoons, uh, it was published in High Times, and it's sort of a character study and about his family life. And uh, whew, if you've never seen this movie, it's a trip. The, he, uh, you, he is a very eccentric person, but when you see his family, you realize he's actually the most normal one. Um, that's all I'll say about that. Very good movie done by Terry Zwigoff, who would later go on to do movies like Art School Confidential and Ghost World. Um, now here's a criterion that I think is sort of surprising because he's not really known for being an artful, artsy director. But they did give him the treatment once, and it's what largely people consider his best movie, myself included, and that is Chasing Amy by Kevin Smith. Um, now, oh, probably a lot of people who normally don't buy criterions did buy this DVD just because they were Kevin Smith fans. You might have noticed comes with this really cool inside art um, of the comic book that uh, the character uh, Holden McNeil drew. So, very interesting, very cool. Has a really cool... This one, unfortunately, is not in the original packaging because I bought it used when Hollywood Video went out of sale. So it's almost... I almost don't consider this, and I'd almost even consider rebuying it, but that might be kind of silly on my part. So it doesn't come with the original books and essays, um, but this is Carnival of Souls. It was a uh, sort of a schlocky horror movie that came out and was filmed in Utah, of all places, um, in the 60s. And it's kind of part of the whole early exploitation era, but later has kind of grown a cult success for being sort of artful and really well uh, shot. Uh, very eerie, cool movie if you've never seen it before. Carnival of Souls. 
Uh, this is one of my favorite Criterions. I actually bought this twice because Criterion recently re-released it on, as one disc that I realized that the older version is actually the better version. Definitely more expensive though, and that is Brazil by Terry Gilliam. And it comes with three discs and a lot of special features, including the full documentary, The Battle of Brazil, about Terry Gilliam's battle with the studio, getting the movie released the way he wanted it to be seen with the original ending. And it comes with two different cuts of the movie, the studio cut, which is called the Love Conquers All edition, and the original Terry Gilliam cut, which has the more dystopian, darker ending, and definitely the better ending of the two, I would say. Uh, very cool edition. Very cool movie, Brazil. Um, I've showed this off in, in one other vlog before, on my uh, History of the Slacker movies vlog, three-part vlog that I did. And remember that epic thing? Um, and this is Richard Linklater's Slacker. Uh, as I've said before, the movie itself does not really hold together that well. It really kind of dated... Um, and it's kind of boring, to be honest. Uh, but I did have recently rewatched it after I did that big long uh, vlog, and uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff in here that's really interestingly written. Um, it's more interesting than good, but um, definitely worth seeing if you're a fan of other like later movies like Days and Confused. Now, uh, speaking of the French New Wave, and I said that 400 Blows is probably the most famous next to Breathless by Jean-Luc Godard. Now, this I have seen. I've seen it before I bought it, and it's a very cool movie, very low budget, very uh, cinema verite, I suppose they would say, even though that's an Italian term. Um, comes with essays, a lot of special features, uh, really cool uh, movie. Um, kind of a crazy, uh, flippant version of the American film noir in sort of that ironic French sense of humor. Um, really cool movie, though. Now, this I bought used, and I still paid $35 for it because it was an out-of-print Criterion. Criterion's actually been going for a long time since, uh, I want to say the early or the early 90s, mid 80s, and they originally were printing on um, laser disc, and they started transferring all their laser discs to DVD once DVD came out. And one of those ones was RoboCop. Believe it or not, this is definitely not a movie that people would consider an art film, but uh, they found it important for one reason or another. And I really actually like Paul Verhoeven. Um, despite some of his cinematic sins, like Showgirls. But this is a cool movie. This is a cool edition. Actually, the edition you could buy now, the Steelbook, um, and the Blu-ray that they've re-released is better. Uh, it comes with more special features, and uh, isn't Criterion. But just for collector's sake, I thought this was pretty damn cool. One of my all-time favorite directors has gotten the Criterion treatment a few times, and I have a couple of them, and that is uh, David Cronenberg. And I have his version of Videodrome on Criterion. Very weird movie, very surreal. When I did my review for Black Swan, I compared it a little bit to Videodrome. Um, and the inside movie case looks like a, a beta tape. I thought that was pretty interesting. If you see the movie, you'll know why. Uh, it's all about a sort of a, uh, a video program that, uh, I guess, for lack of a better word, haunts you. Um, keep in mind, this is before The Ring. Very cool. Uh, James Wood movie. Uh, Debbie Harry's naked in it, so if you're into that. It's another Cronenberg movie. This is... Naked Lunch, and if you thought Videodrome was weird, well then, holy cow, this is based upon the uh, novel uh, written by the uh, poet whose name I'm forgetting, William S. Burroughs, and I've heard that the movie actually does make more sense than the novel, and that's really tough to believe. This is a cool movie, a lot of great special effects, really, really ultra-surreal, borderline absurd, um, but, uh, 
very strange movie. Um, definitely takes two or three times watching it before you can really even begin to wrap your head around it. And uh, this is one of those cool Criterion covers that I love. Um, just let you look at that for a while. This is the next one that I'm going to show you, which is my own private Idaho. Idaho is the state I come from. Not the reason why I bought this movie, though. This is done by Gus Van Zandt, a uh, very seminal in the early 90s independent movie boom. One of the re really, really the only passable uh, roles from Keanu Reeves and one of the last roles by River Phoenix. Um, really cool movie. It's about two... Uh, male prostitutes who are uh, kind of on the road trying to sort of figure out their past and figure out where they're going. It ties in a little bit with with King Lear by Shakespeare. Uh, very arty, very interesting movie. Um, and it dates a lot better than most movies from its time. And it's shot really, really well. Uh, Gus Van Zandt's My Own Private Idaho. <coughs> okay, and the last... The last criterion I'm going to show you now, and it's the last one that I have to show you, is Fritz Lang's M. Now this is a kind of the late period um, German Expressionist movie um, that sort of is seen as a precursor, a major precursor to film noir, and it, it's about Peter Lore, Lori, Lore, people pronounce it different ways, tomato, tomato. Um, and it's about how he is a child killer. Now, keep in mind, this, this movie was made in 1931. <laughs> so that kind of subject matter was really ahead of its time for being as dark and as, uh, and as depressing. Now, none of the killings are actually shown on screen. It's more about the hunt for the killer and who who's better off the the killer who doesn't know because he's crazy or these townspeople are hunting him like a monster. Which is, again, uh, that sort of sympathy for a villain is very ahead of its time. Very cool movie. Really interesting set design by Fritz Lang, which is sort of what he's known for. Has a real angular German expressionist sort of look. Um, if you're into that, I'd say definitely look at it. If, you, if you're into, like, serial killer movies or, like, The Silence of the Lambs and Seven or any of that kind of stuff, uh, it all comes from this movie, M, by Fritz Lang. Okay, so that's my video. That's my Criterion collection. As I've said before, if you have a few Criterions you want to show off, you can post it as a video response below. Uh, leave me your comments and tell me what you think. Uh, what are some of your favorite Criterions? What movies do you wish they would release? What movies do you wish they would re-release? Uh, Blu-ray, because uh, they're doing that a lot now. Um, do you think the Criterion is stupid? It's just for art snobs, whatever. Post whatever kind of comments you want below. Uh, we'll have new reviews for you next week, and uh, hope to talk to you guys later.